Hey everyone, thanks for connecting for today's webinar. Um, this day, today, we're going to be going through building a team. Um, you know, there's a lot of single founder teams out there. This one, um, you know, this is just something that I've noticed. Uh, again, over the past year and a half, I've probably spoken to at least 250 merchants. Uh, and so I'm, you know, seeing a lot of patterns and that's actually what's, you know, driving the topics of these discussions because of all the conversations I've had, the patterns where I see, like, I think there's not enough focus, there's not enough attention. That's kind of where I'd like to um, create content. So one of the ones that I've come across is there's a lot of people that are running businesses alone. They're the only ones in the business. They're solo entrepreneurs. Uh, and that's fine. That's cool. That's that's honorable. That's noble. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to be said about having a team. Uh, now, for me, for example, I, I did do mine alone. Um, and I kind of learned the hard way. I kind of wish that I had somebody with me because I feel like we could have scaled and made more sales. Um, and even now, every now and then, you know, I, I kind of always have one eye open to kind of look for someone to kind of bring in as a as a co-owner. Um, but but again, if I had to do this all over again, the one thing that I would do differently is, uh, you know, uh, find someone to come in and help me. Uh, there's a lot of reasons uh, we'll get into that in a bit, but you know, for this video, we're going to go through looking at one of the frameworks that you can use to find people that you might want to build a team around or how you might want to build a team. This is not the only framework to decide what your team should look like, or this is not, you know, the best or anything like that. This is just one of them. Uh, and we'll go through the details, but I'm really excited about it. I use it quite a lot. Uh, even when I was a consultant, uh, I would use this in kind of formulating teams a little bit. I wouldn't really talk to anybody about the Ninja Turtles because they would think I'm weird, but, but you know, this was kind of something that I, that I really loved to do. So what we're going to be talking about is, you know, how do we mimic our team as a well-balanced team as if we were the Ninja Turtles? So let's get started. This one will be about 20 minutes long, and it's going to go through basically just the data for the benefits um, of why having more than one founder is a good thing. The roles, so we'll look at what are the four roles that a founding team needs to have, and then we'll go through those four roles that you'll see there, that you see down there. Cool. So first and foremost, um, you know, a lot of this data is going to be, you know, from tech startups, like startups that are like, you know, app or software businesses or hardware businesses, something like that, not necessarily e-commerce, but I think that the same reasons why even software teams of two or more work well, I think for the same reasons, an e-commerce team would also do well with two or more. Um, and so, you know, this, you know, looking at this number, you know, teams of two uh, data shows that they just have a higher success rate. 163% better performance. So investors know this um, and investors um, are will only likely invest in teams of two or more because they the data tells them that there's 160% higher chance of success. Uh, that's more than double, by the way. So if 100% chance of success, um, uh, increased chance of success is double, then 160 is obviously more than double. Um, raising 30% more money. So again, investors prefer this. And so it's more likely that a company that's looking to raise investment money is going to have a more successful chance at doing that if, if they have more than two or more people. And again, less likely to scale prematurely. This is another thing, you know, having another set of eyes on things kind of does that sanity check. So, you know, if you, you know, if somebody, you know, it just, it's less likely that you'll do something stupid, basically. If you have that, uh, that second set of eyes, uh, you know, just again, additionally to just these points, you know, the, the whole point that, you know, if you are the solo founder and you only have, you know, 100 hours to give it a week, well, if you had two of you, now you have two, the business gets 200 hours of input, right? So you're getting double the input, right? Not just double, but it's not just, it's not like one plus one equals two. It's more like one, one plus one equals three because of all these other benefits and the synergies that you get playing off of each other, especially if you have a well-balanced team, which is what you know the topic of this whole this whole webinar is about. 
and again, I know a lot of people say, well, you know, I'll only get 50% of the 50% of the business. I only get 50% of the share of the profits, things like that. That's fine. But if you're looking at this number of 163% greater chance of success, actually it's, you know, what would you rather have, you know, a hundred percent of a hundred or would you rather have 50% of 200 and, uh, 60, I'm not sure that's exactly how the math works there, but basically, you know, 50% of 163% bigger thing is more than a hundred percent of a hundred. You know what I mean? Like the pie is bigger. You might only have half the pie, but the pie itself is more than twice the size. So, you know, it's all these things to think about. And again, just having somebody there to, uh, you know, for the, for the emotional support, the mental support, the physical support, um, just the ideas, running of the business. And, you know, no, nobody is great at everything, right? So if you want to, if you build a team where you're good at different things, it just, again, increases your chance of success that much more. So let's look at the four roles. So you'll actually see these roles in many places. I've distilled them into four. If you do your own research for what should a founding team, what roles do they need to have, you'll basically come across these four things, right? There's somebody that needs to have the vision or a vision and goals for the business. Someone can drive towards this vision. Uh, there's sales, right? This is where someone who's like super disciplined, like we have to go out and make sales. They're on the phones. They're kind of really trying to make that sale. They're going out looking for opportunities. Um, you know, they, they need to be really disciplined, right? Uh, then there's the, they're, they're like hustlers, right? The hustler. Um, there's problem solving. Obviously, you need some kind of a technical element to it. You know, you know, if you're especially if you're running a, a, a tech company, you need somebody who can code or you need somebody who's a programmer uh, that can solve those problems. Even if you're running an e-commerce business, you need someone who is, you know, aware of, you know, pixels and tracking and creating campaigns and analyzing your data and being a little bit of a data scientist and looking at where what your data is telling you. So someone who can solve those problems, someone who can not just problems of scaling and problems of growth, but even operational problems like, hey, we have a bug on the site or, hey, we need someone to recode that or, hey, that thing is breaking on mobile. These little things that will come up, you need someone who was kind of programmed to be a pro problem solver. And then last but not least, customer relationships, someone that can not, so that, you know, the sales that come in, somebody that can grow those sales, somebody that can, uh, sorry, grow those relationships and keep customers retained and keep customers happy and keep learning from these customers and making sure the customers are happy. So these are the four roles that you want. Now, it's not that you need one individual person for all four of those roles. You know, it could be that you need three people can do those four, it could be that two people can do those four. And maybe if you're like the super founder and you're, you believe you have all four of those things and hey, more power to you, but it takes a lot of self-awareness to really understand, do you really have all of these four things? You know, for me personally, I don't think I'm that strong in all four of those things. I think I'm strong in a few of those things, but you know, not so strong in, 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 in a few others. So if I did find somebody to help me, it would be someone that, you know, can, can do the things that I can. Now, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm going to introduce this book. So this is one of my favorite books of all time. It's called King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. It's written by this psychologist named Robert Moore, who was an apprentice of Carl Jung, um, kind of a student of Carl Jung, uh, who really was a world famous psychologist. Uh, but basically he goes on in this book to say that, you know, in the male masculine, the full grown man and even woman, this book was written for men, but there is a woman component, for example, instead of kings, you'd be a queen. Um, but, but these four archetypes are consistent across all, all people. Um, and there is an immature version of this archetype and a, you know, man grown, full grown, fully grown man version of each one. And that's the king, warrior, magician, lover. So there's actually a lot of parallels between each one of these four archetypes and the four roles that we discussed here. So let's just go through that one. So someone that drives that vision, right? That's the king, right? There's the king archetype. You know, let, let's, let's uh, just, just I'll leave this here so that if anybody wants to check out this book, they can, because I highly recommend it. So basically the four archetypes are as such. There's the king who is kind of the big, uh, you know, the benevolent leader, self-sacrifice, um, make sure that everything is happening for the benefit of his people and his kingdom, uh, and, you know, is fair and just, right? This is this king energy. 
the warrior energy is one of like physical strength of discipline of you know uh you know go get itness um you know you know strength not just physical but mental um you know athletes could be considered warriors these days right you you kind of know you, you kind of know who who has that warrior archetype uh the magician archetype is the problem solver uh is the wizard is the mechanic the coder you know the electrician you know the, the you know that person that just can solve any problem the the you know the programmer that makes apps the designer you know things that seem like magic like oh my god i don't understand how you can program an app to do that a coder knows they are considered magicians then the lover is more of this romantic uh not just romantic but you know uh amicable friendly you know someone somebody always some you know everybody wants to be friends with this person right everybody wants to hang out with this person it's someone that can really keep the team glued together and keep everybody happy and uh, makes everybody feel like they're valued and they're very important but there's this this energy that kind of keeps everything together so all of these four are like the ideal fully grown um you know adult versions of these archetypes but there's also immature versions right these are the, the shadow the shadow king the shadow warrior the shadow magician whatever so the shadow king is you know someone who's like a we'll get actually we'll get into this um in a bit it's it's in a later slide but basically these are the these are the the way that i feel these actually correspond right there's that king you have you need to have somebody on your team with this energy or some energy needs to exist on the team of the vision and of fairness and of going out and achieving goals and growing the kingdom and growing the empire and making sure everybody is living a fulfilled and happy life all your employees your customers you know your job is that uh the sales uh the warrior right needs to be disciplined right needs to you know be a hustler needs to have you know physical maybe not physical in this e-commerce sense but at least a mental strength or an emotional strength and going out and consistently trying to make sales and 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 bring revenue for the business right bring back resources for the business back in the ancient times it would be the warriors that would go out and you know fight for resources uh, by going to war with other empires or other villages because you know you need to bring something back for your own village that there's that archetype that i think exists there and that is i think in today's really good sales people uh the magician the problem solver obviously right you need somebody to code your website code fix any bugs implement pixels implement these new apps uh build automation things like that these processes this is something that a magician that energy needs to exist in the team to do that and then the lover with the customer relationships right we've talked about customer relationships as a super important thing you know you need to have really strong customer relationships and having this energy of the lover will go a really long way in making sure customers stick around not just your customers but the rest of the team if you do have a founding team to keep everybody kind of sticking together so if you haven't already you know kind of matched it this is you know the ninja turtles kind of perfectly fit you know robert Mo robert moore's for archetypal archetype um you know uh, psychology um i think i read somewhere i'm not sure if this is true but the person who created the ninja turtles was a big fan of carl jung and robert moore and actually designed the ninja turtles um as a way to mimic these four archetypes now i don't know if that's true um it couldn't like likely not be true i don't know where I, i don't remember exactly where i heard it but um you know even if it was a coincidence i wouldn't be surprised because this is something that you know you can't really break down any more four different types of personalities these are the four archetypes that have existed through the beginning of time through through a lot of uh, societies so right so if you remember like leonardo he's the king he's the leader of the group right rafael he's the really stubborn super he's the strongest one of all of them really stubborn really kind of you know the militant kind of really you know you know very strong and athletic uh there's donatello who's the magician he's the one that builds all their tools and their machines he fixes their car he's the one that makes their new weapons he's the one that's kind of has all their computer programs running and kind of checks the data to make sure where find where the problems are in, in the city and there's michelangelo right this guy's the lover he keeps everybody together he cracks the joke at the right time to cut the tension um you know uh, he's the one that kind of um uh, you know 
keeps the team from really fighting with each other by being this amicable person that everybody loves and will listen to and, you know, uh, know that they're there to cut the tension if anything goes wrong. So th that's kind of the four, those are the four archetypes in the Ninja Turtles. So let's, let's actually dive into each one of the four uh, because if you are interested in, in using something like this to help build out your team, you're going to want to look for, you know, clues for where someone's energy might be. Uh, not just that, but you don't want to, you know, take someone, you know, someone who actually has the boy version or the child version of the grown man, right? And there's a lot of people out there that you think might be kings, but um, they're actually either tyrants or weaklings, right? This is, you know, if you watch the Game of Thrones, you know that there's, you know, there's the king, you know, there used to be King Joffrey, that was this tyrant king, very evil, you know, wasn't a good king at all. It didn't really care about his people. It just really wanted his way all the time. That was the tyrant. And then when he, spoiler alert, died and his younger brother takes the throne, his younger brother was a weakling. You know, he was super easily, you know, manipulated, you know, didn't, didn't really know what the right thing to do. Didn't have his own conviction, was very weak and would just kind of do whatever his mom wanted him to do or whoever the one standing next to him would want him to do. So when you're looking, you know, again, this is this is super psychology and, you know, none of us are. I'm not a psychologist. I can't say that I'm a psychologist, but I know that, you know, there's kids, right? There's some kids when you think that they're spoiled, they have someone might be a high chair tyrant that might be or you know, the weakling prince where they kind of really the saddle, you know, they get pushed around a lot. Um, but you can already if, if you have kids or if you're around a lot of kids, you can already see you'll be able to see some of these personalities. Uh, but again, just be careful. It's not that everyone is always a king. Every It's not that someone who's a king is a king all the time. It's that you want to be king most of the time. And every now and then there'll be a little pocket of a tyrant that pops up, a pocket of a weakling energy that will come up. And that's normal, right? Nobody's perfect. There will be times where someone's just in a bad mood and kind of their tyrant comes up for a little while. Same thing with the weakling. So, you know, just make sure that this person is this energy that they have of fairness and benevolence and self-sacrifice and some, and things like that, you know, our actions speak louder than words and that they do th these things all the time. And again, if you're interested in this for yourself, look at yourself, look at your own self-awareness. Are you more of the king at all times? Or are you, do you have more of the tyrant? Do you have more of the weakling? And then now if you can identify where your, where your weaknesses are, really try to build on those. And again, the book will really help. I think the book really changed my life. I'd really recommend reading this book. This is where um, we're going to talk about children um, to see kind of where a child might be. Like, uh, I don't, again, I'm not a psychologist. Is this the term that Robert Moore uses is the divine, divine child. But basically when you're a child before puberty, you'll see these kind of um, sparks of certain archetypes that maybe are more stronger and more prevalent than others. Uh, and so one of like divinity or someone who is kind of, you know, kind of could, you could feel like they could be alpha alphas uh, when they're, when they're young, you know, you might want to start grooming them to be Kings. Now the warrior archetype. So this one, again, discipline, right? You know, you know, physical discipline, physical strength, emotional discipline, emotional strength, spiritual strength. These are things of a warrior, the samurai, the knights of the round table, right? Ninjas, um, you know, um, there's, there's so many warrior classes across the world, Vikings, right? Different time, different parts of the world, like very highly regarded people. Um, but again, very disciplined and very strong. Now, you know, soldiers need to be warriors, but you know, these days there's a lot of, immature soldiers right they're, they're the saddest so these are people that get pleasure in um you know in in hurting themselves or it's 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 odd how how the psychology works with people that just find just are happier when they're sad you know what i mean or people that are kind of really just love drama or something like that i'm not sure um and then masochists these are people who get pleasure in other people's pain these are people that feel pleasure when somebody else is in pain um i know it sounds weird but you know, there's, there are a lot of people like that out there um, and it's normal. It's part of the natural psychology. The idea is that you need to identify if you have these things, identify somebody who might have these things, but really work on getting that warrior energy out. The, you know, the reason they're sadists or mas masochists, you know, that's actually 
it's a you know a warrior energy is a really good energy right the good news if you're a sadist or a masochist is that you know you could be a warrior you could be someone who is this disciplined ninja samurai like knight like you know energy that you can bring to a team um, and that energy needs to really be in that discipline it needs to be in that you know ruthless pursuit of gathering resources and revenue for your team so again a good team needs to have this kind of energy present when the time is right again when you're when you're a child if you see a child and they have this i don't know this is again this is what robert moore uses but the hero some you have to read the book to really understand what he means by this but you know just you know a, a child that um kind of steps up in, in the right occasions, right? Someone that can step up and take responsibility for, um, you know, a, a achieving something. The doers, right? People that come in and do and, and save the day, right? These are people that um, uh, that you want to make sure turn into warriors, right? You need to have somebody like that on that team, on your team. Now, the magician. This this one is is again. This is this is someone that's technical. Someone who can solve problems, right? Now, the immature version of a magician is someone that's a trickster, right? A manipulator. Someone who you know is very tricky, uh, clever, right? Um, or someone who just kind of denies wrongdoing. Someone who lie, right? The the one who's like, no, I, I didn't know anything about this. I didn't know what I'm doing. So again, if you're very technical, you're very smart. If you're a very intelligent person, it's easy to use that intelligence to your advantage by, you know, by ripping somebody else off. And so that's what an immature magician would do. Um, but you need somebody who, uh, you know, obviously is technically smart and can solve problems, you know, quickly and loves solving problems. Somebody like that on your team, a lifelong learner. And so as a child, pre precocious just means gifted. Right. If you have a child and they get really good grades and they're very studious and they pick things up really quickly, and that's a sign that, you know, they have this magician energy. And so not to ignore that, build on that, help them achieve that full magician. You know, like Elon Musk is like an, a magician, right? The guy who invented, who created Tesla and SpaceX and, and, and uh, PayPal. Um, you know, uh, Mark Zuckerberg is a magician, you know. Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, these guys were magicians. It's actually really interesting because we live in a time right now where we're, I feel like we're in the era of the magician. That's why one of our apps that we're launching is called Merlin. Um, Merlin was a magician, right, in King Arthur's throne. He was this person that could do these crazy things and solve really, really big problems really quickly for King Arthur. Um, and so I feel like we're in this era of the magician uh, because the most highly regarded and the wealthiest people in the world right now are actually magicians, right? Like uh, the, all the entrepreneurs that I mentioned, that the richest people in the world, they are all, they actually have a really strong magician energy. Um, they won't necessarily only have the magician energy, right? They'll also have a king energy or a warrior energy, like Elon Musk, for example. He is a, a warrior magician, right? He has two uh, of these energies, right? Um, I think Jeff Bezos is a king magician. Right. Um, I think Bill Gates is a magician lover because of all the charity that he does and the gift and the back. And definitely Steve Jobs was a magician lover, too, I believe. Um, you know, if you look back in ancient times, like Marcus Aurelius was the lover king, the philosopher king. Right. Sun Tzu, who I've mentioned before, the general of the, of the army of, of ancient China, um, he was a, you know, a philosopher warrior. He was a lover warrior. Right. He was this love. He was a war, maybe even a, a lover magician warrior. He had three of these archetypes. So, um, you know, it's not just one. It's likely that you have several uh, energies, but it's the one it's, you know, someone might be really weak in one or two. Right. Somebody might be strong in two and weak in two. And then finally, the, the lover archetype, you know, this is someone like we talked about, someone who's really easy, it's really easy for them to make friends. It's really easy for them to be empathy, you know, have empathy. They have, they have very high EQ, emotional intelligence. Um, they understand if somebody's sad or if there's something wrong with someone, they have this emotional intelligence. Um, and these are the lover archetypes. Um, now, the immature version of these people is that they can get addicted. They can get addicted to drugs or alcohol really quickly. They, get addicted. They, they just have an addictive personality. They get addicted to things. Uh, or they could be impotent, which is a whole other kind of conversation. But, um, but that's kind of what happens. Um, and with the child, just, you know, like a mama's boy. A mama's boy is, is a sign that somebody is a lover or has a lover energy. Um, you know, the Renaissance was a period of the lover 
uh, in, in ancient, in not ancient Italy, but a few hundred years ago, right? It was the painters, the Raphaels, the Michelangelos, the Leonardo da Vinci's. Leonardo da Vinci, by the way, was a lover magician, right? He was, a, you know, he was an inventor as well as a painter and a writer. Um, and so there was this, um, you know, the most highly respected people in society in Renaissance Italy were, were lovers, who had this lover archetype. So in different parts of different times in history, different archetypes have been more highly regarded or more needed. Um, but in business today, if you're running your business, there's going to be different times in your business where you're going to need these different energies. So we'll get into that now. Basically, if we have this kind of a quadrant type thing uh, of, uh, um, like of, of the four energies, as a founder, this is, this is, let's just say that somebody has a strong king and strong lover archetype. You know, they'll, they'll score well, you know, with those. They'll be hair and hair. And so they have, you know, high king and high lover, but they might have a really low warrior and a low magician, right? Then that's a disaster waiting to happen because now you have a business that doesn't really have much discipline, that doesn't have problem solving um, capabilities because problems will happen. Right. There's going to be times where something breaks, something goes wrong, customer's not happy, something's not working, uh, or you need to, you know, do a test, run some numbers, do your taxes, some stuff like that. You need somebody with that magician archetype to step up that energy, you need that energy to step up and solve that problem at that time. Same thing with the warrior. You know, you need somebody to go out, pick up the phone, make the sales. You need, you know, this is what, you know, you need somebody to go out, make the meetings, find the partnerships, develop the business, develop relationships, things like that. The warrior needs to go out and do that and collect resources, resources to bring back from the company. So you need these, these, these positions. So if, if, you know, if this was, if this was me, for example, it's, I don't, I don't believe this is me. Um, I believe that my strengths are really the magician and the king. Or the magician, and you know, I don't know. Uh, it's for other people. This is this is my own private thoughts. But um, you know, if I ha if personally, if I had to make a decision and find somebody else, you know, I would find the people. I would find the person that is, let's say, a warrior lover, right? Someone has those two, you know, uh, um, archetypes that can come up and that and they can bring that energy to the team. Right. That's the energy that I need on my team. So that's if I had to go out and find a partner, I'd find a partner that has those energies. Now, there's not like, you know, you're not going to go out and, and try to find out by doing some survey questions or interviews. Again, this is just a framework, right? This is a this is an abstract framework to help guide in making the decision. This is just, this is just one of many frameworks you could use. But this is a framework that I really enjoy using just you know, just because it's just fun um, to kind of think of things this way. Um, and again, as a leader of the team, if you end up being like the founder and building a team around you, you know, you definitely need to develop the king in such a way where you know how to bring the warrior out in the warrior, even if they don't know they have it, but you need to figure out ways to bring out that warrior when you need, when you need the warrior energy. You need a way to bring out the lover when you need the lover energy. You need a way to bring out the magician if you need the magician energy. So any high performing team, even if it's just a team of one, you need to be able to call up on these energies and solve those problems at that right time. So you need the awareness to know, well, what energy do I need to have right now? Right. If you and your friends are hanging out and going on a joyride and a tire goes flat, you know, none of you, no one knows how to you know, fix a flat tire, then you're kind of screwed. But if you can call on that magician energy that you have and solve that problem, figure out how to change a tire by looking at the mechanics and figuring it out and just even going on Google and, you know, seeing something. But if you can step up and use critical thinking, problem solving to solve that problem. Now, you know, you've helped that team overcome an obstacle and businesses is all about overcoming obstacles as they happen. Um, and so again, this is like what happens with the Ninja Turtles. They go on a mission and something happens and every episode, it's one of the four turtles that is the crucial element that kind of steps up and does something to save the day, right? Or they all played a part in over the 30 minute episode doing little things that got the team to where they needed to be at the end, right? So, so that's basically it. Again, like I said, this is not the, you know, this is what you would want to do if this is what you're, um, if this is what you're, if, if you're building a team, you really want to be high on all four archetypes. So yeah, like I said, this is not the framework for choosing um, 
for for identifying and building a team. It's one way. Again, I would, if you are a single person founder, just keep it at the back of your mind that you might need somebody to help, even if it's a spouse, someone that can step up, that can kind of fill these these things for you. Um, you know, two heads are better than one, basically. I think I could be wrong here, but I feel like I remember a presentation from somebody at Shopify, and I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, uh, that said that um, stores that had more than one account in the store, like they had more than one admin um, as an account holder on that store, they had they were more likely to make revenue, more likely to be more successful. Again, I could be wrong, but I feel like I remember this hearing this at Unite 2007, 2017 at the conference that they did. Anyway, I could be wrong, but there you have it. That's it. You know, I appreciate you guys uh, coming in uh, and watching this webinar. Um, I think it's really important to think about things like this. Um, next up, we're going to be talking, we're going to go back into kind of our, our full on mode of like customer relationships and developing this, you know, good customer experience and customer service model. We're going to be looking at Zappos, which was acquired by Amazon for like over a billion dollars. They were just a shoe company. So they didn't sell anything special. They sold the same shoes that you could find anywhere, commoditized product, but they built a billion dollar business around this commoditized product. So, and they did it using customer service. So we're, we're going to be doing like a deep dive on that. As for the ones after that, I'm not really sure what I want to do yet. You know, these are the seven, eight that I kind of knew that I wanted to do. Um, you know, as for episode, web, webisode nine and 10, we'll see. Uh, but stick around. Thank you. Turn this off as well.